First up, Kirio Hikifune, ladies and gentlemen. Try to look at this objectively. Objectively, Kirio Hikifune, we're kicking off. Is this Kira? What the hell? I think it is Kira. So, Kirio Hikifune, we're gonna start off. Okay, tier list. So, we're saying A for Kirio Hikifune. Kirio Hikifune, I mean, from the showings that we've seen in the series, the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime definitely got her in the A tier. She's definitely A. Before, maybe she was a B, B tier character solidly. The anime with the additional scenes has boosted her up to A. Now, whether if she's S tier is going to depend on the assets. And um, I think, does she warrant being S tier? Because of the uh, other form that she has, I think that she's going to be comfortably sat at A tier, to be honest. Mid A tier. I don't think it's like a really weak A tier. I think she's mid and solidly in there. Um, now we've got... Yoruichi's brother, Yushiro. What do we think about this guy? Bro's gonna say it's nothing and then say he himself is Aizen. Yeah, that might- Friday reveal might be that I'm Aizen, guys. B should be fine, she's alright. Uh, I'll rank to A. <laughs> A is okay. Yushiro is definitely not on the top tier. I mean, for one, you could easily mistake Yushiro for a girl. Um, and then next, we hardly get to see this dude. So, Yushiro, there should be another tier here. I mean, there should be an E and an F tier, and then a wasted potential tier. Yushiro is going to go for D, unfortunately. Siphon, one of the most annoying characters in the series. Siphon is somebody who, she has good moments, and then she has some absolutely annoying moments. And then, literally, she's a strong C or a D. I'm going to go for C. The fact that she's a captain, and the fact that she has some really cool moments in the uh, Soul Society arc with Yoriichi. And we get to know a bit more about her backstory. I hate- I hate the bitch too. Okay, that's a bit strong. Siphon A or B tier, man. Oh, these ironing board fans, man. These lot really love their ironing boards. See, her highest- her highest highs make up for her lowest lows. Yeah, I agree. I think C is a comfortable one for Siphon. Mayuri Kurutsuchi is next, ladies and gentlemen. I think Mayuri um, is someone who's without a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt, for all of the evil things that he has committed, for all of the heinous acts that he has done, for the fact that he mutilated the body of uh, Soken Ishida, this piece of shit, D tier. For Mayuri. There is no chance this guy will ever redeem himself for what he did to Uryu. To Uryu's grandfather and the whole Quincy's. And not to forget, like, the heinous uh, experiments that he's committed on uh, the surviving Arankars. This guy is uh, is insane. Like, he needs to be in D tier. <laughs> Mayuri S without a doubt. High A. Mayuri is a piece of shit, but goddamn, he's so entertaining. And Thousand Year Blood War MVP. Yes, he is. Honest ranking for Mayuri. Mayuri... S? Is he S tier? Is he S tier for what he did in the uh, Thousand Year Blood War arc? His battle against uh, Pernida was uh, top tier quality uh, entertainment. The flashback with Zalaparo was insane. Mari's moment of despair after Namu's death is peak character writing. Yes, it was. The fact that he realized that he was falling into that trap of perfection himself when, uh, you know, he was upset about losing Namu isn't enough to get him into S tier. I mean, 100% he's above uh, Hikifune. I'm just ranking them by, like, I don't know, like, my metrics. Like, whatever. Like, how entertaining is the character? This isn't by, like, how strong they are. It's just, how are they written? Like, what's their role in their story? Did they live up to our expectations? Like, what we thought of them, like, when we first saw them? I'd love to, yeah, let's make a scientist tier and put Mayuri in the scientist tier. Mayuri S tier. Yumichika is, um... Another character who I really like to see um, interacting with Ikaku. Yumichika has some really funny moments. Uh, the fake Karakura Town arc with his Zanbakuto, like calling it a wrong name. Some top quality banter, like from Yumichika. And uh, is he as bad as Siphon? Or is he um, somewhere in the middle? I think Siphon probably C tier, but better than Siphon, to be honest. Uh, Yumichika does have good moments, but he needs just more time to shine, to be honest. Um, otherwise, I would have put him in B. <sighs> Let's pay our respects to Head Captain Yamamoto Gen Ryusai Shigekune Yamamoto. 
<laughs> Yamamoto can Ryusai Shigekune. So, the old man himself. This is without a shadow of a doubt, S tier. And above Mayuri. Um, for his role in the story in the Soul Society arc, for his actions during the, during the Aranka arc, how he turned a new leaf during the Fullbring arc after learning about Aizen's uh, heinous acts, and then his sacrifice in the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Head Captain Yamamoto is like high S tier for me. Now, moving on to Kensei. Kensei, because of like how he's inspired Hisagi and how Hisagi looks up to him in the thousand in the Turn Back the Pendulum arc. So Kensei saved Hisagi during that whole like eyes on holifying people in Rukongai. Uh, I had a lot of expectations for Kensei. Unfortunately, I mean, we saw him as a visor during the Aranka arc. He didn't do much in the Aranka arc, like after they joined um, the battle in Fate Karakura Town arc. And then in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, I mean, he didn't do much either. Um, I really, you know what? If Kensei gets a lot of love and respect in the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime, Kensei is easily like B tier. But for what he is right now, Kensei is. We've seen more of Yumi Chika than Kensei. I'm going to do Kensei like below Yumi Chika, but above Siphon because he's got a cool character design. Uh, that and that trumps like Siphon's annoyance. Rose, what do we think of Rose? <laughs> Rose is another disappointment, I think. This guy's Bankai is literally sound. So noise canceling headphones would be able to defeat this guy. I mean, Mask the Masculine ripped off his ears, but we don't need to go to that extreme. To, like take care of uh, Rose so Rose he's even more disappointing than Siphon like I want to put him in D tier but I think it's probably too cruel uh, because some of the bound characters are going to go in D tier so I think Rose below Siphon like he's just really disappointing to be honest so Sentaro this is the issue with Leech like he has so many characters like Kubo introduces these introduces them in groups and some of them really do fall into the background. Uh, so, Sentaro, sorry, my bro. Like, wish we got to see more of you. I mean, we got to see you more than uh, Yushiro, so you're above you're above him. <laughs> he barely exists, yes. Okay, Kira. Dude. Like, I love the ability of his Zanpakuto. It's absolutely insane. When he uses it against Rangiku during the uh, Soul Society arc, and he just like hammers against a Zanpakuto, weighing it down, and it literally becomes like four times its weight. Kira is above Yumi Chika, above Kensei, above Soifon, above Rose. I'm gonna maybe go B for Kira, especially like with his resurrection and how he was revived uh, by uh, Thou by Mayuri. I have a sneaky suspicion that Kira is going to have an extended anime scene in Core Three. Uh, after he's revived by Mayuri, the guy was one-shotted in the in the first court of the anime. Kira B tier, very nice. Uh, Rangiku, dude. Based on all the metrics that we're doing, it's not a waifu tier list. We can't really rank it based on their looks. But if it was based on looks, uh, Rangiku's S tier, easy. In terms of a contribution to the story, as a loyal lieutenant to the tenth division, um, working under Hitsugaya, her banter with Hitsugaya. Her Zanpakuto in general, and then a story with Ginichimaru, Rangiku is A tier above uh, Hikifune. Akon, my man, he's always there whenever you need him. He's uh, always there ready to back up Mayuri and uh, just to bring in the, the troops. Akon, even though he's a jobber, I mean, I loved his role in the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Um, but Akon is gonna go... Mm, I'm not sure if he's above Kensei, below Kensei. I think he can't. He comfortably goes below Yumi Chika. I think in C tier, Akon. Rangiku is the best. Rangiku S has the has the biggest heart. Well, yeah, she does have a big heart. <laughs> Rangiku is B tier. She's solid. Um, she was a joke at first, but her relationship with Gin was amazing, and it sucks afterwards. She's sort of sidelined and doesn't improve a lot to me. I think yeah, Rangiku does need more screen time. Like, she does. It's unfortunate. Uh, I see four big reasons why people like Rangiku. You mean two big reasons. <laughs> Rangiku develops and deals with her issues off screen and she puts up a front. Yeah, some people claim that she's an alcoholic. She has a drinking issue. That's a side of her that we've seen, but it's not been explored by Kubo properly. Dare I speak about the next character? 
Momo Hinamori for what she had to endure at the hands of Aizen. Um, what's going on with Momo? Unfortunately, Momo uh, suffered a lot at the hands of Aizen. Uh, and for that, I'm sure we can cut her some slack. For the amount of times that she was impaled, attacked, um, brutally beaten. You know what? She has the highest endurance out of every character in Bleach. She survived a, a Bankai attack from Hitsugaya. She survived being impaled by Aizen. She is shield tier. Literally, shield tier. I'm gonna put Momo... I don't know, I don't... Like, I'm gonna put it above Rose. C tier, guys. <laughs> Shunsui Kyoraku. Man. Shunsui is already S tier, without a doubt. I just need a backstory animated from uh, from Shunsui. I just need to know more about his backstory. I want to see some expansion in the anime. The reason why he wears that kimono, I talked about it in a recent video. Shunsui is an incredible character. For that reason, Shunsui comfortably... Is he above Head Captain Yamamoto? Below Head Captain Yamamoto? Put him above Head Captain Yamamoto. For the sole reason of he's the current Head Captain. We know about uh, Shunsui's backstory more than we do about Yamamoto's backstory as of now. Um, and he plays the role of head captain like so much more better than uh, Yamamoto in my opinion because he's more understanding and there's an easy air in the Soul Society now. Like everybody loves being under Shunsui. Like I think he works well like at the top levels of S tier. Easy S. Now Hanataro. Hanataro is gonna be... Before I even rank this guy, Hanataro was supposed to be the original villain of the Soul Society arc. This was on my Bleach Iceberg if you watched it. So that may have caused for Hanatro to be in A or S tier, to be honest. This guy was supposed to be the original villain. And then Kubo shifted it to uh, Aizen uh, on the nth hour. So Hanatro deserves a bit more props, to be honest. Uh, I sort of miss Hanatro. Wish Heyman Squad 4 uh, could have been showcased more. Yeah, yeah. A tier, S tier. <laughs> Realistically, Hinatro, he had a really nice role in the story in the Soul Society arc. And then Kubo just kind of forgot about him, to be honest with you. Um, he's better than Momo. But is he as good as Siphon? Um, I mean, yeah, I'm going to rank him above Kensei. Controversial, but... And at least, like, we got to know a bit more about Hinatro. We know about his personality. He guided Ichigo, like, through the sewers in the Soul Society arc. Medic tier, 100%. So now... Kenpachi Zaraki. What do we think about Kenpachi? S tier. But where does he sit on the S tier? Kenpachi is one of my favorite characters. So I'm really biased with this guy. I think that he's like upper, upper levels of S tier. For the fact that in the Soul Society arc, he teamed up with Ichigo and their crew. And for the fact that he fought Tozen and Komomura, a fight that's overlooked. For the fact that he then went on to Hawekomundo and battled against Noitora. And then going on to uh, fight against the likes of Yuho Bak himself at the start of the fight. The start of the Thousand Year Blood War arc. He just went, fuck it, I'm gonna go straight for the leader. Kimpachi did shit that Shunsui would not even dare to do. For that reason, he's upper S tier. There's no shadow of a doubt. There's the balls on this man. I'm surprised he can even be at S tier. Like, the, the weight of his balls are not weighing him down to D tier. He is unbelievably amazing kenny is the goat unahana man unahana had like it's hard because before the thousand year blood war arc she was always there um we got to see her during the soul society arc when um she had her suspicions about aizen after receiving the cops we got to know a bit more about her character unahana was the one of the individuals who confronted aizen in the central 46 quarters that was amazing uh, i love that with her role and then, obviously, during the fake Karakura Town arc, she didn't do any fighting. She doesn't fight at all before the Thousand Year Blood War arc. She assists in Hueco Mundo, and she obviously um, helps Ichigo to return from Hueco Mundo to the fake Karakura Town. Um, and then the Thousand Year Blood War arc elevates her character to crazy levels. As we get to see the reason behind that sinister, sinister expression she has on her face, which, like, strikes fear into the hearts of the Gote 13 members. We learn so much about uh, Unohana in the final arc of Bleach. Definitely above, um, above Kirio. But because we've seen more of Rangiku, I don't think that she beats uh, Rangiku uh, in terms of her ranking. But she's definitely above uh, Kirio, in my opinion. Uh, she's a solid A-tier character, uh, Unohana. Now, my GOAT, Ishin Kurosaki, or Ishin Shiba... Former captain of the 10th division, 
a member of the noble Shiba family. What do we think about the father of Ichigo Kurosaki? Ishin is somebody who, honestly, when the Aranka arc started and we saw Ishin in his Shinigami garb, it was one of the best plot twists and plot reveals. Uh, when he had the opportunity to face off against Aranka uh, Grand Fisher, top tier. Like, I loved it. And then when Khan, uh, he came to Khan's rescue and Khan was like, you're Ichigo's dad. Like, what the hell's going on? You're not a goofball. Ishin, for everything that he's done, for his role in the fake Karakura Town arc, unfortunately, he was shady in the uh, Fullbrink arc. Everybody was doubting him. Him and Urahara did a lot of shady shit. They were like walking in alleyways in the Fullbrink arc. Um, Ichigo was suspicious. We were suspicious. We wanted to see more of him in the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Um... But unfortunately, we didn't. One thing about Ishin's character that's overlooked is that he's a goofball, but he does all of these like funny, crazy things in order to liven up the atmosphere in the home uh, so that the family just isn't upset and they don't feel that uh, they miss like one parent. Like they don't feel that void from after having lost Masaki. So Ishin plays up and he does all of these like crazy antics just to not let his children like remember like Masaki. For that reason, honestly, he's high tier, high high level character. But I wanted to see more of him in the Thousand Year Blood War arc. And for that reason, he's not going to make it to S tier. He's done enough in the story to earn him high A tier above Rangiku, Unohana, and Kirio. This ranking on the list uh, will probably be done more justice. Because uh, his role is going to be expanded in the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime. Core 3 and 4, we're going to see Ishin. He's going to join the battle. He's going to fight Quincy's. It's going to be fun. Um, ooh, next up, Uryu Ishida, the antithesis, the one who survived Ashwaman, the only Quincy to have survived Yuho Buck's ability, and the one who has the perfect counter to the Almighty. Uryu Ishida is easily S tier, but the thing with Uryu, he's a strong rival to Ichigo. Like, uh, he was the character who introduced us to the concept of Quincy's, the rival faction to the Shinigami. Um, he had amazing, amazing development during the Soul Society arc and conveniently it links back to his past. Um, he just so happened to fight against Mayuri, who just so happened to be the one to mutilate his grandfather. Very convenient, um, but it made for some great writing and it made for Uryu to have an amazing moment where he like did an all or nothing play, sacrificed his Quincy powers and took out Mayuri. For that, he earns like A tier, easy. Easy A tier. Now, where does he sit in the S tier? Uh, because I do think that Uryu is an S tier character. But there are things about his role. Uh, he could have done more in the Aranka arc. But obviously his powers were still like coming back. He had to regain his powers. Fullbrink arc, I liked his role. He assisted Ichigo. Only one not to be tricked by Tsukishima, which I do rate him for. And then uh, the final arc, it was his arc, but... The manga just didn't do him justice. The anime is fixing this though. So Uryu is going to... I'm going to rank him below Yamamoto, but above Mayuri. He beat Mayuri, so he has to be above Mayuri. Tetsu Zaimon Iba. All right, this is an interesting character. He is obviously someone who, I don't know, uh, we don't see much of in the story, but in Bleach, uh, Iba is somebody who is closely linked to uh, Komamura. He's the former lieutenant of the 7th Division, then becomes the captain of the 7th Division. He has a major role in the Thousand Year Blood War arc where he stays beside Komamura as he does his humanification ability where he pays the ultimate price, sacrifices himself above Akon, I think. Above Akon, below Yumichika. Just for the sole reason that we spent more time with Yumichika, I think. Um, no offense, like, Iba is still, like, very likable character. Hitsugaya. So Hitsugaya obviously starts off in the Soul Society arc. He like has several battles against uh, different members of the Soul Society that he's like um, you know arguing with. So he battles against obviously Genichimaru. He has huge beef with him. Uh, the battles are draw in the Soul Society arc. And then the Aranka arc several battles. Firstly with Xiaomong Kufang and then with Lupi, he beats Xiaolong, but only after getting his ass kicked. And this is a captain. So it doesn't bode well for a captain, even without the Gente Kaijo, to um, take that much of a beating from a Frashion. Uh, and I think it didn't do his character much justice, like to the extent that Kubo had beaten him up. Like it wasn't good. Uh, he won the fight in the end, but it wasn't won honorably. Lupi 
his fight with Lupi was a draw because Lupi escapes. The, the objective was to distract the Shinigami. Uh, but the fact that he drew and the fact that, you know, Kubo painted uh, that fight out to be like uh, Hitsugaya was struggling and Urahara had to get involved. Tia Haribal, which was a good fight. I'm impressed. And then his um, battle against Aizen, where he joins up with the Gotei 13 and the Vizards, and they join attack Aizen. He screwed up big time because he, <laughs> because of Kyokasu Yugetsu, stabs Momo, his childhood friend, and loses, like, dishonorably against Aizen. So, and then obviously the fake, uh, the full brink arc, he battles against Yukio and wins. And that was cool. Then the Thousand Year Blood War arc doesn't really do much to help Hitsugaya's character in the early portions him and Rangiku battle against Basbi and the fight's interrupted and then he battles against Kangdu, struggles but then manages to win but not before being knocked out and then being turned into a zombie. After that whole zombie arc ends, he's then obviously revealed uh, his completed Bankai form when he battles against Gerard Valkyrie and that's one of Hitsugaya's like huge like moments of moments to shine like during that battle against Gerard and one thing you have to remember about uh, Hitsugaya he's one of the captains who's had the most additional side stories that have been drawn by Kubo like he has a fully fleshed out backstory in a standalone chapter which was included in the manga volumes um, to commemorate the release of the Diamond Dust Rebellion where we see Rangiku first meeting Hitsugaya, the child prodigy. So Hitsugaya has a lot of story and a lot of backstory. He has a lot of screen time. I've maybe dragged this section out too long because we know he's going to be in A tier. But you know what, if we got to see more of the uh, adult form, I would have ranked him above Ishin. But for the fact that he loses so much and for the fact that he loses initially and then he always has a comeback to get himself out of a situation and it doesn't always work to be honest like it doesn't always like lead to a believable win Hushwald is one of the like most insanely well written Quincy characters uh from like these hints of him being abused by his uncle his backstory with Basby his like need to find acceptance or like belonging and he finds that with Basby initially realizes that you know i'm only hanging around basby because basby feels like i'm not as strong as him like basby only kept hashwald around during those early years like basby was always better than hashwald when they were younger and hashwald just wasn't naturally gifted so it was a matter of him always looking down on hashwald and then when he found acceptance with yuho Buck, things really changed hashwald's personality developed he became cold he began to ignore Basby, like all of his challenges, continuously challenging him. Just a really cool character. I think he's 100% above Rangiku, just for the sole reason that we didn't get to see Uryu versus uh, Hashward in the manga because it was off screen. He's below Hitsugaya. Like maybe he would have been higher if we got to see him more, but he's below Hitsugaya, in my opinion. Nemu as a character, so she's there in the Soul Society arc. She has a full-on like moment with Uryu where she gives him the uh, cure for the poison that Mayuri had given him. And then Nemu really doesn't do much in the story, like for the remainder of the Soul Society arc. Nemu then doesn't do much in the uh, Arankar arc, aside from that horrific scene with uh, Xyloparo, uh, where she gives birth to a new um, version of him. For that, maybe she's S tier, like for having, having to have gone through that. Uh, what happened with her in the Thousand Year Blood War arc where she sacrificed herself bumps her up to high B, I think. It would be tough to rank her any higher than B uh, just because of the lack of screen time. But hopefully, like, we get to see more of Nemu number 8, like, uh, you know, the child version of Nemu. Omaida, do I even have to say this? This fat, like, annoying... I've been re-watching the anime and like the scenes with him just really are so off-putting. Like, I have to fast-forward some of his blabbering like, the anime, like, extends it because of, like, filler reasons. Pads out a lot of the scenes with Omaida, and it's just pathetic. D tier, so we'll put him in D. Now, we're getting on to Nanao. So, Nanao, again, one of the background characters. Um, she's easily above uh, Iba, easily below Yumichika. Her backstory, where we understand more about the Issei family, it isn't really about her. It's more about, like, Nanao's mother, and it's more about Shunsui. We also did see Nanao in the Ten Back the Pendulum arc, if you remember. She was a kid then, too, and she had come uh, to be read a story by Lisa at the time. That was interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm comfortable with C. Depending on how Nanao is uh, improved upon within the anime, I think that Nanao has a chance to go into the B tier. Uh, but I want to see more. I don't just want the Shinken Hakyoken, the Eight Mirror Sword, to be some art 
Gospel that defeats Lil Barrow. I want it to feel believable. I don't just want like uh, this win out of nowhere. Like people call it a Deus Ex Machina. Hisagi, the protagonist of Can't Fear Your Own World. For the fact that Hisagi has a full three volume light novel series and for the fact that he's the lead journalist of the Serite Bulletin. Put some respect on his name. Hisagi is A tier above Hikifune, below Unahana. I think that's a comfortable place for him to go. Man got 69 on his face. He's not messing around. Nah, nah, nah. Naja Koop. This guy. Did he end up dying in Car 2? Are we gonna see him being wiped out by Aizen? He's no special character. Either way, he needed more screen time and he's D tier in my opinion. Next up is uh, the Lieutenant of Kimpachi. Yachiru is uh, a funny one. Learning more about her from the Thousand Year Blood War arc and how she's the actual manifestation of Kimpachi's Bankai easily makes her A tier. But where she ranks in A tier, it's a tough one. Is she above Hisagi? I think I'll put her below Hisagi. Isane kind of, honestly, like she's a captain now, but again, it's similar to the case with Iba. So I'm gonna rank Isane like below Akon, to be honest. Like I don't, I think that she needs more screen time. I think that she has potential, like in the Hell arc, similar to Iba. The best feat that Isane had was being knocked out by Ichigo uh, when he comes to rescue Rukia. Guana Lee is D, yeah. Guana Lee is below, um, no, 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 to be honest. Pepe, Wakabrada. Another pathetic, like, character, to be honest. He's in that tier of Quincy who you just really couldn't care less about. And the fact is, Pepe is disgusting as well. And he's on the level of annoying, like, the same level of annoying as, uh, Omaida. But I don't think he's as, as bad as Omaida. Pepe is the love. I mean, there are a few people who really like this character and his abilities and the episodes that he's in. Personally, he's not my favorite character. Gremi, the visionary, one of the most insane Quincy characters. Uh, Gremi, who was imprisoned up until the second Quincy invasion or right before the second Quincy invasion. Uh, Gremi is somebody who totally unhinged and he was the perfect character to go up against Kimpachi. Like arguably like the strongest Quincy versus the strongest uh, Shinigami. It was a top tier fight. Gremi, I wish he had more screen time. I wish that his fight with Kimpachi like wasn't his only showcase like i wish he had maybe another chance like he could have wiped out someone like before his fight with kimpachi everything that guana lee like did like grammy could have done like instead he could have like been there to scare yachiru and isane but had to be guana lee uh for grammy i'm gonna rank him i think comfortably there below unohana i think he sits well there in terms of his role in the story I really would have liked to see him more. Giselle, uh, everybody's favorite male character. So where does Giselle go? For the full, for the sole reason of her zombification ability, um, Giselle isn't like one of the fodder um, members. Like she's one of the Bambis, of course. Where would I rank her? I think I would rank Giselle in B rank. She's not as bad to go into C. She's a low B. Like I don't think she's like a really high B. I think below Kira. Candy's catnip was. Um, Another unfortunate character who we didn't get to see much of, and a character who like bit the dust before their time, to be honest. They really deserved more. Fought against Ichigo, a joint battle against the Gote 13, which didn't amount to much. The anime is kind of fixing it by expanding upon her power set and her moveset. In terms of relevance, Candice, unfortunately, there are a lot of fans. Candice is C. Probably, yeah below Nanao, in my opinion. Lil Toto, for the sole reason that she's Grammy's friend, she's above Candice. She gets rid of Pepe. Yeah, for the sole reason of taking out Pepe, she's above Candice, in my opinion. Lil Barrow, arguably the strongest in terms of power scaling, the strongest Quincy, and the strongest amongst the shoot starfall because of the sole reason of having this power of landing a shot between point A and point B and nothing in between can get in its way and it's a surefire guaranteed way to hit a target. The x-axis is just an unbelievably broken power but in terms of like relevancy within the Bleach story he's not gonna go higher than B in my opinion. Like he's obviously better than Nemu, Giselle and Kira but he's not gonna go higher than B on this list unfortunately. Ooh, Kilge Oppi, the sinister Quincy who introduced us to the Thousand Year Blood War arc in Hueco Mundo, how he treated the Arankars, and his fight against uh, Ichigo. I think I would rank, especially with the new stuff we're learning about Kilge, how he was like the mentor to some of this new generation of Sternritter. Kilge probably earns himself 
a B tier, high C, low B for Kilge. It would have been nice to see Kilge return, like, oh, he survived the fight with Ichigo and then his encounter with Urahara and Grimjao. So Apache, Mila Rose, and Sun Sun. So first up, Apache. So Apache, dude, man, come on. <laughs> These three, uh, uh, yeah, they fall under the category of, like, the Sternritter. I'm only putting them, putting uh, Apache here because I remember some of the stuff with Nanana and Guana Lee Mo. Um, Apache's role in the Fit Karakura Town arc, I kind of wanted the Trez Bestias to just be over with. Like, get rid of these three and let me just go on to the serious fights with the captains. I just couldn't be bothered seeing all of these fresh Yon fighting. And for their role in the Hueco Mundo arc, which showed that they had no progression over the 17 months from the uh, Fate Karakura Town arc to the Fallbring arc and then the Thousand Year Blood War arc, no progression. The three of these are comfortably in D tier. They're just a victim of, like, Bleach has a big cast of characters and uh, these three kind of get lost in the mix. Uh, Bambietta is easily... If we're going by Kubo's ranking from Club Outside, She's the weakest amongst the Bambis. I ranked her really low in my Sternritter ranking list and people were really upset with me. I feel like for her looks and a sadistic personality and then the inspiration uh, where she was inspired by like these Nazi exploitation movies. Bambietta has a solid like kind of law behind her. If you've seen my Bambietta character analysis, I think she's a B tier. I think that she's above Giselle above Nemu. I think that she comfortably sits high B in my opinion. She's got a likable character design She's just attractive and yeah, you, you guys are right. And her abilities are just really cool to watch. She had a solid fight with Komomura. Uh, unfortunately, got wiped out fairly quickly, then turned into a zombie. And that was that with <laughs> Bambietta, to be honest. Next up, Robert Accutron. My man, Robert. What can we say about this guy? We don't even know what the N stands for. The nimble. I do like how he landed a shot against Shunsui. Okay, forget everything. He gave Shunsui the eye patch. Robert Accutron is C for the fact that he landed such a successful blow on Shunsui above Iba, below Candice and Lil Toto. I hope that he... Is he dead? Did he die in Kaur, uh, Kaur 2? He was lying there, wasn't he? Looking on hopelessly as uh, Yuobak casted Ashmal and yeah, he's gone. Unless a miracle happens, his role in the Thousand Year Blood War arc is gone. I want to put him in D, but for the fact that he shot Shunsui's eye... Oh, the fear has not. He's one of my favorite Quincy. Like, I love how he beat the shit out of Byakuya, properly solidified the Quincy as a threat. Like, they weren't these, like, you know, weaklings who throw arrows, like how Udyu and his grandfather were. These Quincy were like heavy metal punk, like, you know, we're gonna kick your ass. Asnod was the perfect, like, depiction of what these new Quincy stood for. Um, his role in the first Quincy invasion puts him at B tier. And his fight against Rukia and how, you know, despite Rukia's training in the uh, royal palace, he still was able to make her succumb to fear. And if Byakuya didn't arrive, God knows what would have happened to Rukia. Asnod is easy A tier, but where does he sit? For the sole reason that we see more of Asnod than Grammy, he's above Grammy. Is he above Unohana? I think he's above Unohana. Is he above Rangiku? For me, it's hard to put Asnod above Rangiku, but I guess we'll leave it at that. Kangdu is next. My man. He had his lines taken away from him in Kaur 2. Do you remember? Kangdu had no justice in the anime. His scenes weren't expanded upon. If anything, Kangdu's role in the anime was worse, to be honest. Kangdu is a Kang D. He existed. Yeah, so he's gonna be maybe above Na Na Na. Above Guanal Lee, I think. Just, okay, let's put him there because he looks like Bruce Lee. Okay, Yuhabak, Yuhabaha, Buckbeard, whatever you want to call this guy. Yuhabak, the leader, the founder of the Quincy, the final endgame villain of Bleach, the one who wanted to rid reality of the concept of death. Yahweh himself, the son of the Soul King, there are so many titles, the Quincy Emperor, S tier, but where are we putting him on S tier? He's a formidable villain. If the final arc didn't have a strong villain, then people wouldn't have stuck around. He solidified himself as a solid threat. I mean, for the fact that he was there from the very beginning, resembling Old Man Zangatsu, I think he's high-ranking S tier. Like, he's high-ranking S tier. For the reason that he beat Kimpachi, kicked the shit out of him in the first invasion, killed Yamamoto, he's high S tier. Solid antagonist, someone who made you want to stick around and read the story. 
yeah, what more can I say? Tanjiro Karinji. Mr. Karinji, if this was just based on the manga and if Kotu wasn't around, this guy's C tier, in my opinion. He had, you know, a sizable expansion on his role during the final few episodes of Car 2. I'm impressed with Karinji. He was one of the most disappointing members of the Zero Division out of the bunch when we just had manga to go off of. But in terms of what we know now, Karinji is above Kirio, I guess above Yachiru. Anime glowed up Squad Zero, low A, yeah. Owatsu Nimaya, the number one Zanpakuto creator. I think this guy goes easy, high A. If the anime obviously wasn't there, then yeah, he'd be a bit lower, but high A. For his role as well in reforging Ichigo Zanpakuto, in general, his character design, his personality, when he gets serious as well, I love the shift in his character. He's like ready, he means business. Maybe he's S tier, I think, if the anime has more of him in the core three or four. But at the moment, from what we've seen, he earns A rank, in my opinion. Uh, above Rangiku, below Hashward, I think. Dude, we've got some two two amazing characters coming up. Uh, Ichibe, Hyosube, the arguably the real endgame villain of Bleach. What do we think about Ichibe? I've uh, given him a really bad rap. I think I was one of the first who made a video like painting this guy in a very negative light. Ichibe is someone who I really don't like him because there's a lot to him. He's a shady character. He isn't revealing everything. He's easily S tier, high A, low S, I think. Only for the sole reason that we haven't seen more of him. I think if we see more of Ichibe, then he's comfortably like low S, high, mid S. I would only put Ichibe in mid S. If he turns out to be like the end game ultimate villain, then he's high S. But right now, I think Ichibe is above Ishin. He's that high because he's really powerful. And he was around like during the times of the Soul King. So he's like really high A, I think. Forget it. S. I'm gonna have to put him in S. I've put him there because of his potential in the Hell Arc, potential for future story. Ichibe has the most potential out of any of the Bleach characters. Ichigo's story is wrapped up. All, all of the other characters, they kind of are just there. Ichibe is someone that we want to know more about, and the Hell Arc, I think, is going to reveal a lot more about him, what he knows, what secrets he's keeping. So, yeah, let's put him in S for the potential. Senju Maru for the glow up that she had in Core 2. How did one of the characters who had little to no screen time, she got wiped out completely. She got off screen in the manga. Suddenly, like, everything turned around in the anime in Core 2 for Senju Maru. She's S tier. Like, for her Bankai reveal, I don't know how her Bankai is going to be defeated. Core 3, like, may give Senju Maru a lackluster, like, performance. But everything that we've seen thus far, high A for Senju Mommy. I think Senju Mommy earns a low S, I think. I'm still reeling from those additional scenes at the end of Core 2. Low S. Let's just give it low S. Imposter Aizen, Askin Naklava. Askin is a cheeky character. We see him actually grow from being a Sternritter into the Shoot Starfall. We see him battle notable characters. We see him confront notable individuals too. Askin, I wish he had a fight with Mairi. I wish um, that he had an expanded fight with Urahara for his role currently in the anime and the manga. I think we'll rank Askin in A. Above Grammy, not as good as Asnod, but to be fair, I think he's A. Let's keep him as A. If I put Askin in S tier, we're gonna confuse him with Aizen because they they look alike. <laughs> Maskedy Masculine, the superstar. This guy, dude, this guy, the luchador wrestler, I don't know. Yeah, he was cool, but is he memorable? Did he do anything that was extraordinary? I mean, uh, Renji dealt with him. That was satisfactory enough for me. The fact that he beat Renji during the first invasion, Renji got his revenge and whooped his ass in the second invasion. Basby, next up, um, I think Basby is, it's difficult because this guy has a lot of potential. It's someone who I really like. He has that hot-headed, like, character type that, like, I'm just a sucker for. Similar to Grim Jiao. I want to see more of this guy. Basby, for now, let's put him above Bambietta. He has potential to go higher with Kor 3 and 4. B tier for Basby. BG9, let's not even talk about this guy. Like, this pathetic man. It was creepy when he pulled out his tendrils and he was examining Siphon, but aside from that, that's it, to be honest. Like, he had that, like, creepy factor, but I think Asnod, like, satisfied us with that creepiness, and we didn't really need it from another character, so... Many Nas with the super strength, with the blow-up muscles or blow-up arm. I like to extend it scenes in the uh, second core of the anime, but is it enough? Like, does it do enough to bump her up any tiers? I think that, like, amongst the Bambis, unfortunately, she's the most forgettable. Like, Lil Toto, like, has her moments. Candice has her moments. 
Many Nas desperately needed more more screen time, to be honest. Um, and then we have Neonzol Weasel, the perfect counter. I mean, Neonzol did enough to divert all of the attacks of the Zero Division, give uh, Yuho Buck and the Shoot Starfall a strong start at the Royal Palace, but after that really did nothing, and yeah, probably high D tier? No. <laughs> what am I thinking? Uh, for the sole reason that Neonzol at least achieved something. Let's put in there. Ganju. You guys are gonna straight up say that Ganju is D tier, but I think there's an argument for him to be in C tier for the role that he played in the Soul Society arc. My man got cut up by Byakuya. He held in his anger when he found out that Rukia was the Shinigami responsible for the death of his older brother, giving him a little bit more respect than maybe what you guys would give him. I think Ganju is low C. Low C tier. Pernida. What do we think of Pernida? I think Pernida, I really like the expanded role of Pernida, the left arm of the Soul King, left hand of the Soul King. I love that he was used a thousand years ago by Ichibe to seal the Almighty. Pernida is A rank, I think. Again, for the reason that I think Pernida has potential to be expanded upon. We might get a backstory to Pernida. How did Pernida go from being a seal to the Almighty to becoming a fully fledged Quincy of its own? And then obviously separating from Yuhobak, no longer sealing his power. How did all of that happen? There are a lot of questions that need to be answered in Core 3. And they revolve around Pernida. So yeah. So Pernida, low A I think. Low A. I feel like I'm just going to put everyone above Kirio. I think because of the potential. Some people are saying B, I don't know. Like Lil Barrow may have an expanded like role, but that's just gonna be Lil Barrow versus Shunsui, I think. I think that Pernida has a full on backstory waiting. Gerard Valkyrie, similar to Lil Barrow, I mean, for the sole reasons of strength. Gerard Valkyrie's fights, you have to remember, they're spread across a lot of chapters. His first encounter with the Gote 13 and the Vizards is very early on. And then that drags out all the way until he faces off against Hitsugaya, Kenpachi and Byakuya a lot of like off-screen time, a lot of uh, potential for him to grow, a lot of like scenes that we haven't seen that could be in the anime. I think he's high B, Gerard Valkyrie. This isn't on power. If it's scaling him on power, we're gonna put him on S tier. But in terms of potential in the story, what we've seen on it of him, B tier is fine, I think. High B. Filler characters, like the characters from the movies. I hope you're not gonna mind, but I'm just gonna rank them like, like dog shit tier. Is this Zenosuke? It is Zenosuke. This guy is a pile of shit, so <laughs> he'll go, I think, right there. Right next to Omaida, where he belongs. Lisa, Yadomaru. Again, another character who just fits into that, like, C tier rank, to be honest. What can you do? Um, I did want to see more of her. I loved seeing her in Turn Back the Pendulum, her bond with uh, Shunsui and uh, how Shunsui had faith in her and sent her off uh, to the expedition uh, to find out what was going on uh, with Kensei's missing group. Like she was eavesdropping on the captain's meeting. All of these things definitely rank her above Momo, above Isane, I think. And then her training with Ichigo, I think, bumps her up quite a bit. Forget it. I'm going to give Lisa also for attractiveness. Put her right under Nanao, I think. These aren't very controversial. I'm playing it very safe. I think I've got a solid grasp on uh, the placement of these characters. At least, like, the safe placement. Nothing that's gonna make people too upset. Okay, one of my favorite characters is up next. We've got Hollow Ichigo. Hollow Ichigo is someone who I have a lot of respect for. I love this character. I love what became of this character later. Everything, like, from how he was introduced, how it threw you off, Hollow Ichigo is high S tier. One of the best Bleach characters in my opinion. Hands down. Above Kimpachi. I don't think he's earned the role of being above Yuho Bak solely because we don't really see him much. Like Kubo used him very sparingly within the manga. So let's just rank him below Yuha for now. Oh my god. Jean Karia, the the monstrosity behind the bound arc. This guy deserves a fate worse than death. Uh, I'm gonna rank him right at the bottom of the barrel, low D. Even below Omaida and these like Bleach Movie 2 villains. Grimjow, S tier. But where in S tier? I'm biased on this. Grimjow is just like... I told you I'm a sucker for this hot-headed personality type. Think back to the Arankar invasion of Karakura Town, like at the start, where he comes, boxes the shit out of Ichigo, like has him, like holds him up and just boxes him. The animation and everything fluid, it was amazing. Grimjow is S tier. I think he's above the Zero Division members there, above Mayuri because of his like iconic appearance, above Uryu, below Yamamoto. I think Grimjow is comfortable, mid S tier. I guess like when we add more characters, Grimjow will like filter down into low S. But yeah, he's at the moment from all the all of the characters so far, he's mid S. Dude, this guy. 
Loopy. Loopy, literally. He got impaled by Grim Zhao, which was probably one of the best things that I had seen. He put up quite a decent fight against Hitsugaya. But once Urahara came onto the scene, then things were basically over. Uh, that was a draw, to be honest. After Grim Zhao's arm was healed, he dealt with Loopy in the best way possible. So Lodi. Let's put him, let's put him below. No, I don't think he's that bad. Let's put him be above the Trez Bestias, below some of these uh, Stern Ritter because of recency bias. Wonderwise, think about it. And a Ranka who has the ability to negate the flames of Ryujin Jaka. This isn't no ordinary Ranka dude. Like this, this is someone I think they deserve. The sole reason of being able to negate like Yamamoto's Zanpakuto flames. A tier, S tier with Wonderwise. I'm joking, I'm kind of trolling. I think Wonderwise realistically is comfortably high D, mid D if anything. Very forgettable, to be honest. Uh, there was a lot of hype when Wonderwise was like being formed, like who is this? And But yeah, unfortunately doesn't amount to much in the end. But without him, the whole fake Karakura Town arc was benefited massively. Aizen was able to do and achieve a lot, a lot more than he would have without Wonderwise, because those flames of Ryu Jinjaka are very troublesome. Ask Yuhabak, like he knows all about that. Maybe Aizen knew about uh, uh, how Yuha was defeated a thousand years ago. He was like, yo, we need to deal with these flames. Before anything, let's just handle that and then, you know, we'll proceed with our plan. So Wonderwise, honestly, great addition, um, but not really memorable and didn't do much aside from that one role that he had. So Nell in the baby form, aside from like that cute appeal and when she says it's a go like a couple of times, uh, she's annoying but it's still charming. And I like uh, baby Nell uh, when she's kind of like afraid and when she's reassuring Orihime. All of those scenes really do win Nell for me. I'm not talking about Nell's adult form. I'm talking about her baby form. Ichigo obviously forms a very quick attachment to her, like a older brotherly kind of role with Nell. I think for that reason, let's just put baby Nell low A. High B, low A. Pre-Varone is part of time. Dodoni, he's the first opponent, like first proper opponent that Ichigo faces when he enters Los Noches. And uh, he doesn't want to use his Bankai or his Holification. And Dodoni kind of like pushes Ichigo to like get to that next level. Ichigo's conserving his energy. He's like, I don't want to just use my Bankai and my Holo powers on the first guy that I'm facing off against. Heck, this isn't even one of the top 10 Esparta. This is just like a fodder guy. Like, you know, he's... He's been abandoned. Don Panini, Dordoni. I respect some of the speeches that he gave. Aside from that, he's high D. For me, even remembering like all of that, like he's solid, like high D. And he's in general, like generally he's like a fodder character, but I did remember him. And I like that he was able to push Ichigo at least to that limit where he had to use his Bankai against him. So Arunyero Aruru Eri. It's always a mouthful whenever I have to say that. So I loved his story with Rukia. I think that Aaron Yero is an excellent device for the growth of Rukia, him taking up Kain's body, uh, and it worked well in a battle against Rukia. It led to a great story, and I think that Aaron Yero is C tier, definitely. I think he's among the Bambis, he's above Robert, but is he above like the likes of Isane? I think let's put Aaron Yero above Momo, only for the sole reason of that impactful like uh, battle against Rukia. I thought it was really good. And then Siruchi. Siruchi is like Trez Bestia's level. I'm gonna put it below Sun Sun. Siruchi, honestly, I wanted that fight over with. Like a lot of these, like pre Verone, aside from Dardoni, it was bearable. A lot of the pre Verone Sparta fights, let's just get it out of the way. I want Ichigo versus Grim Zhao. Let's just get to there. Um, and then some of these battles later, it's just like padding out the manga with like these fights where you just wanna get to the next one. Next up, Genichimaru. Yes, guys, the snake in the grass iconic character who sacrificed decades, a century of his life, uh, for a plot to defeat Aizen. Uh, Genichimaru, I think he's above Hashward, below Hitsugaya. I think it's a safe placement to put him there. So if we recall, he interrupts the battle between Ichigo and Jidambo. That's his introduction, iconic. Then he fights Hitsugaya later. It's a draw because, you know, he uh, leaves. And then the battle against Ichigo during the fake Karakura Town arc. That's again a draw but that's where he senses the weakness in Ichigo's eyes and it serves as a plot twist for Ichigo's character change or development. Amazing stuff. Um, and then the entire backstory with Gin and Rangiku as you piece it together, amazing. And the last battle that Gin unfortunately takes part in is against Aizen in the fake Karakura Town arc and he ends up losing, as you all know. The host of Bleach Encyclopedia, which gives him massive props. So yeah, high A I think, high A. Just because he's not in the story for as long, he's below Hitsukaya. Peshe, honestly, another Another annoying character who infinite slime infinite slick whatever you want to call it dude i wanted all of that shit over with 
like literally watching him tag along with Uryu for so long it was just so annoying so Gantenbein he served as like a nice like punching bag for Chad to show off his uh, power-ups but yeah Gantenbein unfortunately man come on doesn't have much more of a role and the fight I don't think we got to see more of it like as much of it as Siruchi versus Uryu so I think Gantenbein's even lower so yeah let's just keep him below Peshe next up we've got Tesla Frashion of Noitra. He was holding uh, Orihime captive. Did uh, Tesla do anything other than that? Do you guys remember? Yeah, Kimpachi wipes Tesla out. So yeah, he's just as irrelevant. He's one of the most irrelevant characters. Like, let's put him above like uh, Zenosuke. Let's put some respect on his name. He's not as like pathetic as Zenosuke. <laughs> Tesla is just Tesla. He existed, yeah. So Lilinet, I think her existence more just levels up Stark's backstory. I mean, do I care about Lilinet like on her own? No, not really. Uh, do I care that she's linked to Stark? She's a part of Stark? Yeah, that's all really. Like, there isn't much else about Lilinet. Another forgettable character who falls into the background of, uh, like, this wide cast of Bleach characters. Lilinet is, let's just put her above Pepe, because at least she serves some purpose in the plot, serves as Stark's other half. And because of her existing, Stark's resurrection looks really cool. Like, he gets the double guns. Lodi and Minoli. These two, I love the fact that Grimjaw dealt with them. They're like on the same tier as Pesce. I'm just gonna put them like below Pesce to be honest. At least Pesce did something. These two got dealt with and didn't they uh, return like later on and get dealt with again? Kilgay dealt with them. Yeah, literally every arc that they're in, they get, they're just there as a punching bag. Filler characters, the Ama guy, filler arc guy. Dude, nah, you're with Gene, bro. Whenever Bleach used to go on filler back in the day, I used to just have a temporary hiatus. Okay, we'll stop watching Bleach now. Uh, and then he used to come back whenever the fillers uh, would stop. Screw it. I'm gonna make an executive change here. I think Baz B, honestly, if Grammy's that, forget it, Baz B's, yeah, below Grammy. I think that's error on my part. I think Baz B earns that spot on the Grammy. So Masaki, her impact in the story, pretty high. People wanna put her at high A, but does she deserve to be in high A? She had like a notable role in Memories in the Rain, but come on, like does she deserve to be like that high on this list? My gut feeling says that she's solid B tier. She's definitely earned up to B because of just how iconic she is and how she's really memorable. That assist where she came to help Ishin was impressive. I think she's low A, I think. Above Kirio, 100% above Kirio. I think low A is comfortable for Masaki. Not to like take anything away, Ichigo's mother, she had a great role. Noitra, Gilga. This Espada is uh, really good, to be honest. I really like Noitra. I hate the character. Like, I hate his personality. But for the fact that I hate him, makes him, like, a really good villain. I think Noitra is easily dealt with Ichigo. He dealt with Chad. And then he put up a good fight against Kimpachi. He made the guy actually use two hands. Let's put him along the likes of uh, Askin, Gremi, and Basby. I think he comfortably fits into that, like mid-tier villain kind of range where like middle like not the strongest but like mid-range like comfortably uh xyloparo probably similar story to be honest i really like xyloparo and then with the potential for his role being expanded with uh, his backstory being revealed in spirits of forever with you xyloparo has a lot of potential for expansion especially if spirits of forever with you is adapted this dude return how did i forget he returns in the hell one shot above basby a tier a lot of potential he's gonna be in the hell arc god knows what he's gonna do and when he returns and he straight up went after Renji. He's like, yo, where's that scientist Shinigami? And where's that four-eyed freak? Yeah, Xyloparo definitely earns his spot in A tier. Neliel, now we're talking about adult Neliel. Looks-wise, A tier. Like, just for looks alone. In terms of role in the story, this is gonna, like, depend on her placement on the list. Her adult form isn't, like, there that much during the Hueca Mundo arc. Her resurrection form appears. Thousand Year Blood War arc has potential to expand Neliel's role. We didn't see her much in the Thousand Year Blood War arc too. We saw more of Baby Nell. Adult Neliel. So there's potential. I mean, let's just put her on... I'm gonna put a low A below Baby Nell, only for the sole reason that Baby Nell has more screen time. I think it's a safe one. Like, I played that really safe. Donda Chaka, let's straight up my guy, you're going below Peshe. Donda Chaka was so annoying. Literally seeing him follow around Renji. Like, I really didn't, I hated seeing this guy. Zomari, he's not a mid-tier villain. He's, like, one of the low-tier villains. D-tier. He's with, like, this bunch up here. Like, you know, I wish I saw more of him, but let's put him below mask comfortably. Ginrei Kuchki, or grandfather of Byakuya Kuchki. What do we think of Ginrei? Well, we saw more of him in the Turn Back the Pendulum arc. But aside from that, the guy basically don't really see him much. He was in, I think, the Zombakdo Unknown Tales arc 
the fella Genrei Kuchiki low C tier. I wish we saw more. The grandfather of Byakuya in his prime would have been really badass, I think. Kain Shiba is again, he falls into the mid tier Shinigami list or low tier Shinigami list. His entire backstory is like really emotional. I watched it when I was really young. So whenever I go back and I like watch those episodes where Rukia is like trapped. She's thinking back to her past, how she was responsible for Kain's death. And then that entire like Rukia versus Aranyero stuff, like it gets me. Like when uh, Kain tells Rukia about the heart and how two people are formed together by a heart, like all of that stuff is just top tier for me. And uh, he's definitely above Aranyero, above Siphon, above Kensei for the sole reason that we know about Kain's backstory. I think he's high C. It's going to be controversial, but I'm, I'm biased with Kain. He's obviously belonging to the Shiba clan resembles Ichigo. Kain's comfortable high C, I think. Chizuru, the molester from the substitute Shinigami arc. She's a very vile, sickening character, this girl. She's on the level of like Zenosuke. I'm gonna put her below Zenosuke. Some of the stuff she does, go back and watch the anime. Go back and read those early chapters. It's very questionable. Tessai only has any points on this list for his role in the Ten Back the Pendulum arc. When Urahara was going alone, to the scene of the holification incident in Rukongai, Tessai was the only one who kind of spotted him and was like, yo, it's really shady for you to sneak around at night when the Soul Society is on high alert and you're wearing that Reatsu concealing cloak. And Tessai was like, forget everything. Forget everything that's going on. I saw that you were distressed about your Lieutenant Hiyori. I'm gonna join you. For that reason, Tessai is in C rank and I could say that there's potential to see more of him, but I don't think we're gonna see more of Tessai because there's just so many other characters. Tessai probably comfortably goes above Robert Accutron mid C, I think. Next up, Chojiro Sasakibe. Now, if you were to ask me about Sasakibe before Core 1 of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime, I would have put Sasakibe low C. I would have even put him high D because who is he? Like, literally, he's just in the story and then he dies. We don't really care about him. But that short flashback scene of Sasakibe where we see him uh, in his younger form, he activates his Bankai. We get at least, like, it's a brief scene. It's not got a lot of dialogue, but we see, like, the passion of Sasakibe there and it's enough to kind of bring his character up and like make us care about him a bit more. I think Sasakibe is mid C, low C. He's definitely above Iba right there. Sasakibe stabs Yuho back in the back. Sasakibe delivered the killing blow. Promote the guy to, to S tier, straight S tier. But I think that's among one of the feats that brings Sasakibe up from D to C. The fact that he delivered the finishing blow, the fact that he had uh, an extended scene in Call 1. I want to put him up, but I can't. Think back to when he got <laughs> one-shotted by Ichigo in the Soul Society arc. He was among the three uh, lieutenants or Shinigami who charged at Ichigo and he just pawed them off like, boom, step aside. It's hard to put Sasakibe higher. So unfortunate. Next up, Seijin Komomura, guys. What do we think of Seijin Komomura? I like Komomura. I know that the fandom aren't big fans of Komomura, but I personally really like this guy. His humanization ability and everything, his backstory with the Elder, his relationship with uh, Tozen. He is actually a well-developed underrated character in Bleach. Yeah, he got slapped up in the Soul Society arc by Kimpachi. He got utterly humiliated. Then the fake Karakura Town arc happens and, you know, uh, along with some teamwork, they take down Tozen. They have like a touching reunion and then Komomura ultimately loses at the hands of Aizen. Obviously, him losing at the start of Thousand Year Blood War arc, he redeems himself, comes back stronger to avenge the death of Yamamoto, who obviously let him into the Gotei 13. This is a very honorable Foxman. Extremely underrated. Say what you want, but Komomura is high B. Could I even rank him low A? If I rank him B, I'm just feeding into the hype that he's underrated. I, let's just put some respect on his name and let's put him above Yachiru at least. Low A. Comfortable low A with Komomura. Or Charlotte, who is of course one of Baragon's Frashion. Low tier villain. Like, we don't really care about them. At least Charlotte is more relevant than Wonderwise and Loopy. Next, we have another one of Baragon's uh, Frashion, Findor. The anime honestly really does justice to Findor. I don't know why. Out of all of the fights that they could have um, gone really crazy with, with Sakuga, it was Hisagi versus Findor that got an insane amount of attention. Like, I don't know why. Uh, is that enough to ranking him up high in the D tier? I think he's comfortably sitting around here with these boys. I think he's under Charlotte, maybe above Charlotte. Let's just say. I like the gimmick of when, you know, more pieces of his mask were breaking off and like he was getting stronger and stronger. I thought that that was really cool. I guess, yeah. D. 
Jidambo, a really imposing threat at the start, but we don't really see much of Jidambo otherwise. He has that confrontation with Ichigo. He's the gatekeeper of the Serete. What else is there to Jidambo, really? He has no role after the Soul Society arc, to be honest. He's in like one scene in the Thousand Year Blood War arc. As much as I wanted to see more of him, Jidambo is... I wouldn't disrespect him that much. I would put him above this dude from the 13th Division, Sentomaru, whatever his name is. Barragon, or the number two ranking is Sparta, uh, but the former leader of Wekomundo. I like his story. I like his respiration ability. Barragon is comfortably B, I think. He's above Bambietta. His fight against Siphon had, had me on the edge of my seat. I loved when Siphon's arm was decaying. It's just a really cool, like, sequence. Vega. Vega. Yeah, uh, <laughs> whatever your name is. <laughs> Literally below Sunsun, I think. Irrelevant. Now, Harry Bell. I like Harry Bell versus Hitsugaya. I thought it was an amazing fight. And then her role within the Thousand Year Blood War arc unfortunately drags her down a bit. But for the fact that she's the queen of Wekomundo, Harry Bell is comfortably at B tier, but does she have enough to bring her up to A tier? I think she's above Barragon. Hakione? For the fact that she's promoted, isn't she promoted into the 4th Division? Yeah, she's the Lieutenant of the 4th Division now. I'm gonna rank her here above Jidambo. These are characters that desperately need to be expanded upon. It's not enough to just have them be promoted and yeah, we've not seen anything as a result of that promotion. We just know that they've been promoted. So Keigo's older sister, she had that like funny interaction with Ikaku which used to crack me up uh, whenever I used to go back and watch those episodes. So yeah, she's above Chizuru. Low D tier for, for the filler characters. Old Man Zangatsu, I'm gonna put him mid s tier um hollow ichigo is that high because he's a fucking maniac like hollow ichigo is insane that's why he's so high up on that list uh, but oman zangetsu comfortably mid tier for the emotional support that he offers ichigo for that mentor figure that he plays it would be disrespectful to put the guy anywhere lower to be honest kukaku shiba is i mean looks wise S tier. A, A to S tier. But in terms of relevance in the plot, aside from the like canon that she has, we don't really see her play much more of a role. Kukaku can go right under Ganju, I think, in C tier. She's not that bad that she would be in D tier because of her looks. I think it pushes her up to C. Yoroichi Shihoin. Have some common sense. Like when you try to rank Yoroichi. It would be insane to rank her below S. Just in terms of like the appeal of her character. Everybody who's into Bleach loves Yoroichi. She's S tier without a doubt. Where in S tier does she fall in? Think back to when Yami and Ukiara invaded uh, Karakura Town. And when she just turned up and just beat the shit out of Yami. The hand-to-hand -hand combat, not even using a Zanpakuto. And then the fake Karakura Town arc. Her battle against Aizen. Some really respectable feats that she managed. And then all of her like feats that she achieved during that fight against Askin. It would be crazy to think that Yoriichi is anything below uh, this mid-tier in S. For the looks alone, she's in S tier. And then for, you know, the potential that she has in the future, mid S tier. Oscar Joaquin De La Rosa. This is the man who told Chad he needs to use his fists in a responsible way. He shouldn't uh, like hurt others with the strength that he is being given. Let's just put him, obviously, honestly, I'd put him above Dardoni just for the respect alone. Put some respect on Grandpa Chad. I wish we got to see more of the guy. I wish we saw Grandpa Chad like having some interactions with like Urahara and stuff would have been cool. Grandpa Chad meeting Ishin, that would have been a cool one. Now more filler characters. These guys can go straight into bottom D tier. The leader of the Exekias. Yeah, Rudburn, low tier villain character. When I was younger and I saw Rudburn's uh, character design, he is freaky. Like just this creepy skull with the like antlers, really scary. I don't know, top 33% of D tier. Uh, next up, Ukiara Shifa. This guy, there's no real like question about it. He's one of the best villains in Bleach. Above Grim Jiao, personally, that's just a preference. Like I love Ukiara's character, even more so than Grim Jiao. More so than Old Man Zangatsu, more so than Yoruichi. Dude, I feel like just putting him right next to like Holobichigo. But I have to think about this. Ukiara has solid character development, like interacts a lot within the story. He has that entire character arc where he kidnaps Orihime, learns about the heart from Orihime. And I felt sorry for Ukiara at the end of it all. And then after learning about Ukiara's backstory from the Unmasked Data Book, it just made me fall in love with his character even more. Like how he represents nihilism. He was one of the loneliest uh, hollows. Even as a hollow, he had no companionship. So he never knew 
what it meant to have a heart or form a bond with anyone. Forget it. I'm gonna allow myself to put him at the top of S tier. As like some of the iconic villains. A story needs good villains. And I think that Ukiara is a good villain. I think he carried a lot of the uh, Hueca Mundo story arc. Which dragged at times. But because he was there, it made it bearable. Like, I just wanted to see Ukiara. Every time that he was in the scene, I was, like, really excited. Yami is not the absolute worst. His reveal with him being the zero-ranking Espada was a really bad one, though. Nobody took it seriously. I think he's low C tier. I wouldn't, like, put him as low D. Just for the fact that he's an Espada, it, there was a plot twist involving him where he became the zero-ranking Espada. Oh, well. Okay. Low C. Stark. Stark is... I don't think he's underrated. I think he gets um, a lot of praise, Stark. I'm surprised because... I didn't think that he was that popular amongst the fans, but Stark is actually really beloved and uh, his role in the story is fun. You can get behind his personality. He's laid back, he's chilled, he doesn't really care. But I think he falls under this category of villain where he's like top tier villain, but not like best of the best, like S tier level. I think Stark is A tier, but now where does he fall in the A tier? So A tier, Stark is definitely above Xyloporo. I don't know, above Grammy, maybe above Askin. Let's put this guy comfortably, I think, under the Askin, A tier for Stark. What do we think of Hachi? Hachi C tier, I think. His fight against Barrigan was really good though. And then his role in the Ten Back the Pendulum arc, he was badass when he was banging out all of these Kido spells against uh, Aizen. Aizen, like, he blocked like an incredibly insane Kido spell. Put Hachi low B, I think. He deserves like a lot more screen time, but I'm just gonna put him low B. Heck, if Kira is low B, why can't Hachi be low B? I do want to see more of him. What can I say about love? The fact that he reads Shonen Jump uh, magazine makes me like him, but again, let's put him right next to Rose. I want to see more of love. So many, look at all of these characters. There's so many characters, so little screen time. I wish that some more of these characters were expanded upon. Next up, we've got Mashiro Kuna. So Mashiro Kuna, she exists literally, but for the sole reason that she has a bit of a showcase during the fake Karakura Town arc, she puts up a decent fight in the uh, Turn Back the Pendulum arc when she's holified. She goes absolutely crazy. Put it in C tier, I think. Okay, now we're getting to the real meat and potatoes. So now we've got Sosuke Aizen. If you were to ask me, out of Aizen and Yuhabak, who I like more, Aizen is just really charismatic. He has that charm to him. It's undeniable. He can sweet talk anyone, literally. I think he's above Yuhabak. I think Aizen is one of the best Bleach characters that Kubo has ever created. I think Aizen was the reason that a large majority of fans followed Bleach all the way through a lot of filler arcs. All of that, like, suffering Studio Piro put us through. Aizen is top of the barrel, top of S tier for me. Tozen is... At least we have a backstory with Tozen, and at least it's kind of expanded upon in Can't Fear Your Own World. Tozen's among those villains here, where he's joining the likes of Stark, Askin. But I think Tozen has earned the right to be above Askin, as the most loyal member of Aizen's army. Is he above Asnot, though? I don't know. I don't think he is. But he is A tier. I know that much. Uh, Tozen's, like, in the upper levels of A tier. He's just going on from mid to the high level levels of A. Um, Hiyori Sarugaki. Hiyori is annoying. I know that much. I would have put her like on the level of like Rose, Love and Mashiro. But then I mean, what role does she play aside from in the Ten Back the Pendulum mini arc? And then aside from like training Ichigo, there isn't really much else to her to be honest. I mean, if Lisa's high C, and I guess I could put Hiyori below Lisa only because Lisa's got the looks going for her. I'd put Hiyori there, I guess. I know some people would probably put it in D or low C. Yeah, Hiyori's okay there. So Shuren can go into, I don't know, forgettable. Let's put him here. Below Lodi and Minoli. Uh, Kukapuro, what a legend. Unsung hero of the uh, Huekamundo arc. Put him here below Yushiro. Kokopuro is at least above Omaida, which uh, is more than enough. We're literally looking at one of the most unsung, like, legends of Bleach. The entire story may not have even happened if it wasn't for this character. Con, what do we think of King of New York, guys? Con is Con tier. Con has a tier of its own, man. Realistically speaking, a lot of comedic relief. If we're putting the likes of like Yami in C tier, Con is memorable. Like he's a mascot of the series. Let's just put Con above Momo. Okay, Kisuke Urahara. This is someone else who I'm really gonna be super biased for. Urahara is one of my favorite characters in the series. S tier above Yoriichi, above uh, Yamamoto, above Shunsui, above Kimpachi. Do I just swipe him all the way to the left, like top S tier? Urahara deserves that much, man. For the fact that he knows everything that Aizen knows, and for the fact that he didn't get corrupted, Urahara's high S. He's above, like, he's on this level of character. Like, you know, top well-designed character. 
really memorable. The characters who you look at when you think of Bleach as an incredible story. Kego actually has some really sick moments in the story. Remember, he had the balls to challenge Shunsui when Shunsui came and told them, yo, you guys might not be able to meet with Ichigo anymore. And he's like, yo, what the hell are you on about? Kego has got some guts. For that, I'm going to put Keigo in C tier. Yeah, Mizuhiro can comfortably go low C tier. Tatsuki, for the fact that she punched Ichigo in the Arankar arc, that she obviously had a childhood with Ichigo as a past with him, low C. Okay, next we have Ichigo's boss. Kumi is D tier again. She also has a role in the Thousand Year Blood War arc where she returns the substitute Shinigami badge to Ichigo. I guess, yeah, she's over here. Next to Kione with Jinta. Uh, this guy, he's there in the story. But aside from the reveals that we had in... Uh, club outside where we find out that uh, Jinta and Ududu were mod souls created by Urahara. Yeah, this guy is comfortably like D tier above Lilinette. Ginjo Kugo. Now, Ginjo Kugo had potential to be like a really good character, really good villain. Surprisingly, I loved his involvement in uh, Can't Fear Your Own World. We got to learn more about why Ginjo felt betrayed by the Soul Society. Ginjo is honestly a character who I have a lot more sympathy for after reading the light novels, and he's upper levels of A tier, I think. I think he's up here with like Hashward and Gin. I think he's more iconic than Hashward, but not as iconic as Ginichimaru. I'm gonna straight up put Ururu next to Jinta. Ryuken is someone who I really want to see more of. I like Ryuken as a character. Let's put Ryuken in not C tier and not even B tier because I want Ryuken to have an expanded role in the story. I want him to be in Core 4, joining like Ishin, maybe fighting a Shoot Starfall member. Even if it's like a one-off story, I'd love Ryuken to be there. We learned a lot about him in the Everything But The Rain flashback where he was supposed to have an arranged marriage with Masaki. And for that reason, I think that Ryuken, for his potential in the future of the story, he can sit above Nemu, I think. Not as much as like Ishin, because with Ishin, he's obviously the father of the protagonist. Ryuken can comfortably go into low A, mid A, if he has an expanded role, uh, if he teams up with Ishin in the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime, and Ichigo's sisters kind of fell into the background. So for that reason, let's put them above Ichigo's friends, like Keigo and Mizuhiro. I'm gonna put Yuzu below Tatsuki, and I'm gonna put Karin above Tatsuki. Only because Karin has the whole Karakura Razor thing going on. Yeah, I think most people agree, Karin and Yuzu are C tier. Kinda odd that they didn't get any powers. I guess Karin and Yuzu may need a trigger. Like, they may need something like Rukia to come trigger their powers to awaken. Or as they get older, their Shinigami powers may just activate. I mean, Kazui has Shinigami powers and he's a child. So God knows what happened to Kazui. Jackie, let's put her under Siruchi, man. But am I really gonna put her under Ikumi? If Chad's... If Chad's granddad is all the way at the top of D tier, why isn't Ikumi? Yeah, forget it. Ichigo's like motherly figure can go there, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. Top D tier for Ikumi. Looks boosted her up, I guess. Without question. Orihime is up here. I'm gonna put Orihime below Yoriichi. Above Odwan Zangetsu, above Grimjao, above Uryu, above Mayuri, above Ichibe, and Senjumaru. I think it's a safe bet put placing it here on the S, S tier rankings. By it. The fact that she's up here is because of her looks and her incredibly broken abilities to reject phenomenon. They're insane. Or he may deserves that spot up there. Yeah, Mo Shishigawara. So this guy, dude, come on. The comfortably here, next to Omaida. <laughs> Tsukishima, for the majority of the Fallbring arc, we were led to believe that he was the villain. And Tsukishima, I don't think he's as good to be in A tier. He's not that good. I'm just thinking of it as though, like, how long was he in the story for? Like, did he have a notable, like, uh, role in the story? The Book of the End definitely pushes him up, but I don't think it pushes him up to A tier. He's above Barragon. I'm gonna put him at high B. Uh, Giriko is high D. High D. Let's put him below Dordoni, at least. I mean, he appears again in Can't Fear Your Own World, and he accompanies Tsukishima and Ginjo in uh, the Soul Society. He ended up dying alongside them in the Fallbring arc. And we see Giriko appear somewhat in the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Like he was there like training in uh, Kukakushiba's palace. Okay, my man Chad. Among Ichigo's friends, Chad is the character who I'm the most upset about because I wanted to see more of Chad. I wanted the Fallbring arc to really flesh out Chad as a character, but unfortunately we got none of that. Aside from his like really ultra alpha appearance and the fact that he became a boxer and he's boxing against like the world heavyweight champions, Chad unfortunately doesn't do much else and he kind of falls to the wayside and he's low A. I mean, it's unfortunate like Chad, had a, had a power up. He His power was revealed in the Substitute Shinigami arc. 
He went on in the Soul Society arc to lose against Shansui. Then he trained, unlocked a second power up, and then beat one pre Verona Espada, and then lost to Noitora, and then that was it pretty much. The Volbrink arc. That was his time to shine. Unfortunately, Chad didn't get it. The Thousand Year Blood War arc, he's literally just an assist character. I mean, he doesn't have like a major fight. So low, I mean, am I really putting him low A just for the fact that he's Ichigo's friend? Pretty much. Low A for Chad. Ruruka, what can I say about Ruruka? I think she's a solid low B tier, high C tier. I think she's, she sits around here, like with Hiyori, I think. High C for Ruruka, I think. Yukio, you know what? Yukio is rather impressive. Like his abilities come in clutch in the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Helps them to navigate to the Royal Palace for that reason. Yukio could go high C. Maybe below Lil Toto, I think. Ikaku Madarame. Dudes, I love Ikaku. I love the fact that he wants to stay under Kimpachi. I love the fact that he hides his uh, Bankai from everyone. And for that reason, and for the banter that he has for his iconic battle against Ichigo when he identifies Ichigo as like the real meaning behind his name. And then in general, the fact that he's now training Ichika. Like, Ikaku's a really cool character. He's top S tier, not top S tier, <laughs> top C tier, low B tier, uh, Ikaku, I think. Actually, screw it. If Hachi is low B tier, he's above Hachi, 100%. If Kira is low B tier, definitely next to Kira. He's like low B tier. Now, Renji Abarai. Renji, what can I say about Renji? He's like a punching bag for most of the series. He has pretty useless Bankai until the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Hiyo Sabimaru is one of the worst Bankai in the series. And then so Ozabimaru, the, when it's activated, the final form, it bumps Renji up to A tier at minimum. I wouldn't, would I go as far as to put him S rank? I wouldn't. I think Renji is comfortably in A tier. Now, where in A tier? He's above Rangiku, 100% above Rangiku. Is he on the level of like Hitsugaya, Ishin, Gin? I don't think so. I think I'm okay with leaving Renji there. We've got more to see of Renji. Like Renji is going to be there again in the Hell arc. He had like a bit of a fight with uh, Zyla Poro. It was fun. Now, uh, Rukia Kuchki. Now we have to really think about this. Rukia is either low S, high A. I think Rukia is definitely above Uryu. Well, maybe in terms of power. She's now a captain. She's got her own Bankai. It one hit killed Asnod. Her physical appearance. And then just the longevity of her character. Her role that she's played in the story. She's literally thinking about it. She's the second most important character in the series. If Rukia didn't meet Ichigo that day, like the series just wouldn't have happened. Think about it without like this waifu thing going on in your head. Rukia's importance in the story is undeniably more than Orihime. Rukia's role and achievement her growth that we've seen like from her childhood in Rukongai going into the Kuchiki family then like finding acceptance from her brother rekindling her relationship with Renji there's so much to Rukia hands down above Yoruichi I don't want to put it any higher but I think amongst the girls in terms of importance Rukia is above Yoruichi and Orihime Byakuya Kuchiki if Mayuri is low S let's just start the discussion here so Byakuya is similar points to Rukia because his story is interlinked with Rukia put Byakuya above Mayuri because he's the first captain that we see. He schools Ichigo, shows him like this is the difference in our power. You're playing games bro, like we're on a different level. For that reason Byakuya is above Mayuri and then it's so rewarding to see Byakuya return in the story as a companion, as a friend uh, to Ichigo where he's like you're an enemy of Ichigo Kurosaki, I'm gonna take you out. Like he says that to Tsukishima, it's just so heartwarming. Like, I love scenes like that. And it uh, wins me over with Byakuya's character. So yeah, he's definitely around that kind of like level on S tier. Next up, we have the protagonist himself, Ichigo Kurosaki. Like, is there any question where Ichigo is going to go? Bleach is Ichigo's story. It's his journey. There wouldn't be any of these other characters if it wasn't for Ichigo. He has the most growth. Everything is because of him. Yeah, he's an excellent protagonist to follow. So relatable. So yeah, Ichigo's high S tier. We have now Shinji Hirako, the leader of the Vizards. Let's think about where we've placed the Vizards so far. Like, the Vizards we've mostly, they've wound up in like C. Hachi's wound up in B. I like Shinji. I like Shinji's character in Turn Back the Pendulum. I like how he mentors Urahara a little bit, kind of schools him, like gives him some advice, like he was struggling with Hiyori. And then that scene where he pulls the veil off of uh, Aizen, and Aizen's like, yo, like, how long have you known since I was here? And Shinji's like, I've known about you since you were in your mother's womb. This guy is above Hachi, 
Comfortably, Shinji can go below Rangiku, I think. With Shinji getting his Bankai reveal in Core 2, yeah, he's like around the top of A tier for me. Next, we have Yushiro Ukitake. It's undeniable. There's a lot of wasted potential with this character, but there's room for improvement with the anime around the corner. Core 3 is going to feature a lot of Ukitake. Ukitake needs a fight scene in Core 3. For that reason, Ukitake can easily be in B tier. And he's in A tier, 100%. But where in A tier? He's definitely above Hashwald. He's above uh, Ginjo. Okay, yeah, he's above Gin. Hitsugaya. I think Hitsugaya had a full, fully fleshed out like character arc in the story. I'm just like, I think somewhere he's either above Gin or he's below Gin. It's so funny how all of the like silver head characters are next to each other. There's potential for Ukitake to go uh, even higher on this list with the Hell Arc. Okay, if we're placing him like based on potential, based on like what we're gonna see in the Thousand Year Blood War Arc anime and in the Hell Arc, Ukitake is high A tier, I think. Don Konunji, the real MVP of the entire series. Like Don Konunji can comfortably go above Omida. We'll give him at least that much respect. Guys, we've got more filler characters here. We've got those like bounce sensor characters. I could not care less. I hated the fact that these three like stuffed animal bound characters were still in the Aranka arc. What was Studio Piero thinking? Like mixing filler with like canon content. Like that really annoyed me. Okay, we're on Rukia's older sister, Hisana. What can I say? Hisana, you feel sorry for her. I mean, Byakuya's like late wife. It would be safe to put Hisana under Ginrei Kuchiki, I guess. At least Ginrei Kuchiki has a potential of a backstory. We've seen everything that there is to know about Hisana. I mean, Ganryu from Bleach Movie 1. I know this guy's name because I've genuinely watched Bleach Movie 1 so many times. It's my favorite Bleach movie. Was referenced during the Thousand Year Blood War arc with the Valley of Screams. But in terms of Ganryu, I'm gonna put him above Shuren, I guess. He's not completely forgettable. I remembered his name. Now Senna, this isn't a waifu tier list, guys. We have to base this on logic. We have to think with our brains. You can't be thinking with anything else but your brain. You need to think about like, what role did Senna play within the plot? She was the reason that we all watched movie one anyway. So for that reason, I mean, realistically speaking, in terms of a waifu tier list, yes, Senna is S tier. She's an S tier waifu. But in terms of like, looking at it broadly speaking, if we've put characters like Harry Bell in B tier, it's going to be hard to justify putting like Senna. I think Senna, from the way that I'm marking this, she's going to be in C, I think. Yeah, Senna is sadly just a one time, one and done kind of deal. I'm going to put her above Lisa and Hiyori and Riruka. So, I mean, dude, she's above Sasakibe. All of the other movie characters are wound up in, in D, to be honest. So she's pretty lucky. She's fed, fed well. Now, Tensa Zangetsu, really cool character design. His moment with Ichigo is like one of my favorite moments in Bleach when Ichigo learns the final Getsuka Tensho, goes inward and has that like incredible moment where he realizes that he needs to accept the blade, like he needs to be pierced by the blade of Tensa Zangetsu in order to learn the final Getsuka Tensho. It's just top tier writing. And when Tensa Zangetsu reveals his true desire, which has always been to protect Ichigo, top tier writing, like, and he starts shedding tears. For that reason, not gonna be S tier, because he's had a brief appearance in the story, man. I mean, yeah, I can put him above these characters, but it's hard to place him, like, any higher. Tensa Zangetsu is comfortable there. Holify Tensa Zangetsu, on the other hand, I mean, it's just an offshoot of this form. So I guess I could put it right next to it. Holify Tensa Zangetsu arguably could be Ichigo's like real Zambakdo spirit because that's the first time that we've seen Old Man Zangetsu and Ichigo's inner hollow merge. So when people ask like, how does Ichigo's Zanpakuto spirit look like now? Closest to it is going to be Holified Tensa Zangetsu. Like if Ichigo were to go to his inner world right now in the Hell Arc or in the Thousand Year Blood War Arc, he's gonna see like some variation of Holified Zangetsu. This being Ichigo's true Zanpakuto spirit, just a nice tidbit of information. But because it's pretty much Tensa Zangetsu, I'm gonna place him next to each other to be honest. So this is the Bleach characters tier list, uh, guys. This is pretty much all of the characters. We've included some filler characters and like some movie characters we've also ranked. But that's pretty much everyone, to be honest with you. Um, I think we've done a decent job. <laughs> it kind of got controversial there for a bit, but I think we figured it out. So yeah, Ichigo, Urahara, Aizen, Yuha. Yeah, I'm comfortable with all of these choices, to be honest with you. The top S rank, all of these characters are S rank. Um, Ichibe and Senjumaru arguably could be boosted up a bit, but because there's room for them to grow, I think that they can move up 
once we see more of them in core three and four yeah we did it yeah that's it yeah we just finished um god knows how long i've been talking about bleach characters for a massive thank you goes out to all of my amazing patreon supporters for helping to make this video possible if you also want to support the channel and see your name in the end of my videos then check out my patreon which has loads of perks like early video access and so much more thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me